Hello, this is Storybooks channel. New videos are posted every day. Subscribe and click the bell. Julia, how did you hear the exciting voice from the hallway? That gentle voice Julia would always recognize as her mother's voice. The woman burst into the chamber as if she had just fought three dragons to get here. The daughter only smiled weakly. She was lying in bed, coming off the medication the doctors had injected her with in an emergency. She was fine. Her blood pressure's up. Mom. Julia, the mother of two kids, asked about the kids. Maria was only five years old and David was six. The mother touched on her daughter. Then she chuckled at the ridiculousness of it. Mom, what are you doing? Julia protested, removing Nancy's hand. How can blood pressure have anything to do with temperature? What do I know? What have those doctors been injecting you with? Maybe they gave you drugs to calm you down. Julia smiled again. Her mother was a terrific woman, but she was very caring. Sometimes she was overprotective. As a child, Julia was always being taken to the hospital for the slightest headache. What if it was cancer? What if it was a dangerous disease? So Julia got used to hospitals, though not by choice. But this time she came here for a really serious reason. High blood pressure could cause terrible problems up to death. Symptoms of such a problem are hard to spot right away. You don't know what's making you sick or giving you a headache, so the people who called an ambulance were not wrong. It was really serious. In the hospital, the first thing she did was to lower her blood pressure, fill her with various pills, and very soon she fell asleep. Her ex-husband had driven her to such a state. And it all started a year ago, it was a cold winter. The clock showed 12 o'clock, but Liam still had no time. Julia spent her days babysitting. She didn't have time to keep track of her husband's affairs. But when they became more frequent and Liam stopped coming home, she really got worried. It wasn't their marriage that would suffer first, but the children. And they were still so young. They won't understand why their mom and dad decided not to love each other anymore. Although there was no love at all, the last few years together Julia has already regretted marrying this man 1,000 times. He works as a welder and drinks most of his evenings, which he could have given to his children, he spent with his friends in garages and other people's apartments. Julia had been pushing her mother to get a divorce for a long time. Only Julia was sure that Liam would reform. She would help him to get on the right path of goodness and love. But with each passing year the hope became less and less. Her husband Liam was increasingly late for work. That's when she began to suspect something was wrong. Finally, at 2 o'clock a.m. Liam deigned to return. In the hallway, there was some drunken shouting. Then he dropped something at the sound, ran out. Juliet is sleepy tired. She had spent the whole day with the children and the laundry and cleaning. Today, the little ones were unusually cranky. Ono shouted quietly with a long voice. Julia children once will be a fool, and you are not ordering me around. Mommy with nonchalantly replied Liam, taking off his old dirty boots. I am the boss of the house. Liam took off his shoes and went into the bedroom. As he passed his wife, Julia smelled an unfamiliar perfume, but she didn't pay much attention to it. It was too late. It must be her perfume. Or maybe she imagined it, and the strong odor of alcohol interrupted everything. The next day Julia decided to talk about the situation. More specifically, about her husband's behavior. It's outrageous, she exclaimed. You get somewhere all day long and then declare everything home at 2 o'clock a.m., as if nothing had happened. She burned her hand on a kettle of boiling water and screamed in pain. Mommy, the son was worried. Mommy, you're all right. David wanted to run to help his mother, but he didn't dare because he caught his father's angry look. He gave that poor pancake with such anger, as if he was going to go to war after that. But also, where do you fall? Julia turned to her husband again. He looked at her with the same hateful eyes. It's none of your business. You just have to sit here and watch the kids. Or is that even hard for you? Are children hard, Liam? Of course, I'm always tired, and what are you tired of? The man interrupted her, raising his voice. It was as if these two didn't notice that there were children sitting at the table with them. I'm on this job for a pittance, so you can have something to eat? 
I take care of our children and you're ungrateful, screamed Liam, and not even a slap. Julia, I don't want to scare the kids anymore. Didn't even risk it. Maria, sitting at the table, cried, but David remained undeterred. Maybe he wanted to cry too, but tears are for the weak, his friends had told him, and he didn't want to leave his beloved mommy alone. Julia, meanwhile, overcoming the pain from the strong blow, began to soothe her daughter, and then took her in her arms and carried her to the nursery on the way to rock her. Only the five-year-old boy Liam remained in the kitchen. David was trembling all over. He didn't know what would be done to him. He had never been punished before, but it seemed the time had come. You take liberties like your mama did. You're gonna get it too, only harder. You're a man, aren't you, or are you weak? The boy answered uncertainly. Liam was about to intimidate him with another scary phrase, but Julia reappeared in the kitchen. Her face bore traces of tears, but she held herself proudly. Julia put her hand on her son's shoulder, as if to show that he was under her protection. Sonny, come to Maria, play something, and I have something to discuss with Daddy in a calm, sweet voice, she said. The son looked at his mom, saw her support in her gaze, nodded and ran away, where he was told to go. Julia, on the other hand, sat across from her husband and crossed her arms. Are you cheating on me? She concluded, averting her gaze to the lower left corner. She didn't want to meet Liam's eyes because otherwise she wouldn't have been able to hold back her tears. And in a situation like this, you can't show weakness. What makes you think that? Liam grinned. I smelled the perfume yesterday and today I found a gold earring in your pants pocket. I hate gold. And even so, there's something wrong with you. And after saying that, Julia finally looked up at the bastard. He dares to ask such inappropriate questions. He's trying to piss her off, but Julia won't let him. He has already humiliated her in the eyes of their own children. How dare you say that? Barely holding back tears, she asked. I don't understand your indignation. Sweetheart, her husband grinned. That's what everyone does. Understand, after the birth of children you have changed, and not only internally, but also externally. You stopped taking care of yourself. Completely tastelessly, you dress, said Stella. Why are you so surprised that I found someone on the side? What kind of asshole are you, Lesh? Pack your things and get the hell out of here. And then Liam smiled evilly and clouded Chelsea's back. Honey, kids need a father. Without a father, they grow up to be incomplete weak individuals. Is that what you want, for everyone to bully David for not having a father? And then everyone's gonna start questioning who your kid's father is. And then they'll call you a fallen woman. Is that what you want? There was silence in the kitchen. It was broken only by the noise of the road outside. Julia couldn't understand what the man across the street was talking about. But after weighing all the pros and cons, she realized that it made sense. Her greatest fear was that the children would not have a father. She just wanted a happy, complete family. But why did fate set her up with such a jerk? Well, Julia began proudly after a short thought. You're right about the kids, but I'm leaving this marriage just for them. It's over between us, and it's your own fault. Yes, God forbid. Liam said relaxed and left the kitchen, leaving Julia alone. Julia, Julia. Jesus, Julia. Shouted Nancy almost burst into the apartment and on the move, Taking off her jacket and shoes, her daughter came out of the nursery only two minutes later. Mom, what are you doing here? Julia didn't understand. Julia, I just saw such a thing. I told you. Yes, not tell me you've already boringly ranted. Julia is emptying the laundry basket. It's been a real chore. She just put the kids to bed. Laundry and cooking. And here was her mother with some overwhelming news. Liam is cheating on you. Mother said almost cheerfully. She thought the news would make a sensation. After all, she had been waiting for it, waiting for her daughter's divorce from this uneducated asshole. And now the day had come, the real reason for the divorce had finally arrived. But Julia, to her mother's surprise, only shrugged her shoulders as if it were mundane news and went on with her business. Nancy, even dumbfounded, she squatted down to get in line with her daughter. Daughter, can you hear your liam? Yes, I can, Mom. Julia couldn't stand it and stood up to her full height. 
In anger, I'll throw my dirty laundry on the floor. He's cheating on me. You're two months too late with that news. Honey, I don't recognize you. Nancy said. I don't understand my daughter at all. Your husband is cheating on you, do you hear me? Oh my God, why does it take you so long to realize that? I know. I know why you're still not divorced from him. Because mom, I want my children to have a father. You took that happiness away from me. I don't want that for my children. Your father loved another woman. I didn't want to torture myself or you. There would never have been true love in our family if I hadn't gotten divorced. And you're a wimp. Your husband's been cheating on you for two months and you put up with it. And takes care of his kids. Shame on you. Raising a servant. At least I'm not selfish and take care of my children. Julia screamed. And my children will have a happy family, like everyone else's happy family. Where's the happiness in that? It's hypocrisy. He's an illiterate alcoholic who's not worthy of you. He found a fresher one right after you had kids. He is just like your father, make no mistake, you will regret it. My only regret is wasting my time talking to you. It was my mistake to be born into your family. I intend to save my own. Nancy almost cried at his daughter's words. This speech was like a dagger thrust into her heart. She slammed the door loudly and left without another word. Julia cried bitterly and helplessly, sinking to the floor. Maria and David ran up to her and tried to calm her mother, but she screamed and cried hysterically, not noticing how she was slowly killing herself and pulling her own children with her. One night, sitting behind and which I found recently, as Liam was making less and less money, Julia saw an advertisement for a dating app on the site. It offered to meet interesting people from her city and perhaps find love. Purely out of curiosity, she registered in the application and started browsing through the profiles. Her attention was attracted by the profile of a young guy about 22 years old. She was only 25. Without children, she could be called a girl in the prime of life, especially if she tidied herself up. So she decided to write to this guy. His name was Kevin. He was very athletically built, wore glasses and seemed very intellectually advanced. The guy immediately attracted Julia's attention with his out-of-the-box thinking. They got to talking. Kevin turned out to be a programmer. In his free time he played sports and liked to read. But not a boyfriend, but just a dream, as all relations with her current husband were already ruined. The frustrated young mother decided to try her luck here. They arranged to meet over the weekend. Julia did not tell him that she had children or that she was married. So far, this information could only scare him away. The woman decided not to take any risks. She didn't want to scare away her happiness, which may have been so close. Finally, Saturday night came. Liam had gone out again since the morning. But Julia didn't care anymore. She put the kids to bed, asked her good friend to watch them, did her makeup and ran to the meeting. March was coming to an end, so Julia took the risk of wearing a red mini dress. It was quite warm outside, though the girl was sure that they would go to some coffee shop. Oh, you'll see me right away. I'm wearing a bright blue jacket. No one else has one, Julia joked into the phone. I can see you, see your hand up, Kevin replied. And indeed, in front of Julia stood a guy in a beautiful black coat and glasses. They walked towards each other. Shall we go to the cafe? Julia nodded happily without a second's pause. She could feel like a young carefree girl again. When she was a student, she had never had a shortage of boyfriends. That was probably why her mother had been so terribly anti-Liam. After all, among all the smart, beautiful and rich, she chose the complete opposite. But at the time it seemed to her that this was love. Now I'm actively engaged in programming, finishing the last courses. Hey, bar work, joked Kevin. And salad. What bar? Are you kidding? Programmers are in great need right now. You're gonna get a job easy. You'd be hired by any company. Julia supported him. What's your education? I thought you said you were three years older. I'm sure you've already graduated. Yes, Julia was a little embarrassed. She didn't finish her studies thanks to Liam either. Love played tricks on her, and now she works as a manager of an online store for pennies. She could have been a very good philologist. She always wanted to work for a big publishing house. But no company would hire her now. 
No one wants uneducated people like her. I graduated in philology. Now I work as editor-in-chief of a major channel. Julia lied. She was always good at lying. Well, that's cool. I bet you have a lot of useful connections, the guy remarked. The girl smiled and nodded affirmatively. Soon dinner was over. Kevin paid the bill and the couple went outside. You know, I don't like March, Kevin informed her, looking to doll. The cafe they had dinner at was in the middle of a park. So they walked straight out onto the dark paths, lit only by street lamps. Why? Julia asked. It's slush, here snow, there grass, here earth all mixed up, creating chaos. In my opinion, it couldn't be worse. The girl only silently agreed. They walked down the dark alleys, holding hands like a real couple. Julia felt like a teenager from her first crush. It was such a tender and romantic evening. Suddenly some kind of crackling sound was heard from behind the bushes. Julia visibly tensed up. Don't be afraid. It was probably a stray dog, and they often pick up scraps deer. Kevin reassured her. It had better be a dog or even a wolf, but not the one they saw a second later. An angry man ran out into the road. He was clearly drunk and very aggressive. This stranger pounced on Costia, beating him off his feet. He began to beat the poor guy, and he could not even respond, because this huge carcass literally crushed him with its superior weight. Julia started screaming. Fortunately, they were not far from the cafe and the guards and staff came running to the screams. They did something to stop the fight. A massacre of fighting guys, Kevin's face was covered in blood. But when Julia looked at the face of the madman who had attacked them, she was speechless. Liam, she exclaimed. You know him. Kevin marveled, stopping the blood with the cold press the cafe guard offered him. I don't, Julia hesitated, but Liam answered for her. Her husband claimed to be a drunk. We also have two children, Julia. Who's that? What is he saying? Kevin became more and more amazed, but she didn't answer anything. Julia just looked at her husband with a panicked head. They were taken to the station. Kevin didn't bother to write a statement, and by three o'clock in the morning, they were all released to write a ticket for disorderly conduct. As soon as they arrived home, Liam literally jumped on her, slapped her, then took her by the ear and led her to the bedroom. Julia screamed and pleaded for help, but no one heard her. The neighbors wouldn't come here for any reason. Luckily, at least the kids weren't awake. Or maybe they were just afraid to come out of their room, hearing their parents arguing and fighting again. Please let me go, I'm hurt. Julia was crying. You shouldn't have been out in the open. At her mother's screams, David came running. He tried to grab onto his father and push him away from his mother. He got a blunt elbow and flew to the corner and immediately lost consciousness. David screamed at Julia, choking back tears. Liam, please, I beg you. But it was as if Liam didn't hear. He then sat on the edge of the bed and soon passed out. Julia, on the other hand, stayed up all night. The first thing she did was rush over to David and touch his pulse alive. This boy, her son, he is so brave in his small years. A huge bruise had formed on his body near his rib cage. Mommy is just a baby, son. Sunshine Mine affectionately told him mother to calm him down. His ribs don't seem to be broken. Then she waved a special ointment to make the hematoma dissolve faster. That night became crucial. Julia realized she couldn't go on like this. Many innocent people had been hurt today. Now it was not just her. The very next day Julia called her mother, apologized for her past actions, and asked for help. Of course, Nancy didn't refuse her. While Liam slept. After yesterday, Nancy took Julia's children to her village. Julia cried and realized that the psychotrauma she had received would stay with them forever. But the most important thing now was to get them away from this tyrant. What about you, sweetheart? Nancy asked excitedly, picking up David and Maria. Are you going to stay with that despot? No, of course not. I'm going to go to the police right now and record the beatings. That way the court will accept the divorce case faster. Julia replied. I hope he'll get a criminal record. Suddenly, they heard the bed creak. It came from the bedroom. Liam was waking up. But that was it, Julia said in a whisper.
and they left the apartment together with their mother. Julia kissed the children and Nancy goodbye, put them in the car, and drove away. She called a cab and drove to the nearest police station. Hello, where can I file a domestic violence report here? Asked Julia at the door. She didn't hide her bruises and scratches. Everyone in the station was rather indifferent to such a statement. They had all seen a lot of things over the years. Only one young guy not even in uniform, who was probably just practicing here, seemed a little shocked. Come this way, please, calmly said a full-length low woman, coming out of the office that was located to the right of the reception desk. You need medical attention now, she asked thoughtfully. No, thank you. I just want to write a statement and start the trial. Julia replied. For now, you can only write a statement. It will be considered within a week. Do you have a safe place to hide from domestic violence? Julia thought for a moment and nodded affirmatively. Of course, she would also go to her mother, and it was really dangerous for the children to stay here after everything that had happened. She filled out all the documents, went through a lot of formalities, and finally, the application was created. Then she was photographed from different angles, recording the beatings she received. Julia did not forget to mention her child, who also had a hard time. She was assured that she would consider the application as soon as possible. The girl left the office and opened her cell phone. There were 10 missed calls from Liam, but Julia was not going to answer any of them. He would pay for everything he had done. Phase one was over. Now she was going to go to the grocery store, buy something for the road, take the bus leaving from the bus station, and ride to the village in peace. The plan worked like a Swiss watch until Julia walked away from the ticket office where she bought her bus ticket. That's when she came face to face with her enemy. Where have you been? Monotonously asked a male bass. If you don't get away from me, I'll scream. Only now you won't get off with just one fine, Julia warned him. She was about to go further, but her wrist was squeezed by Liam's hand where the children were going. Really? Asked her husband. I won't tell you that even under the most horrible torture, and I know where you are going, not there. Only for a moment, Julia's gaze showed fear. He knows he'll find them. This man is capable of anything. He can even kill and get away with it. You're wrong. I'm not going anywhere with improvised and Julia. Although that's a lie. It was a white thread. Yeah, well, why'd you buy the ticket? That's none of your business. Bastard. The victim said angrily and spat in his face. He dropped his hand in surprise, trying to wipe his eyes. He was already full of anger and rage and probably wanted to hit Juliet again. But there was no sign of her, ran out into the station building. The girl urgently dialed her mother's number. Julia, darling, what are you doing? Asked Nancy. Mom, how long do you have to go? Julia asked excitedly. Well, two more hours for sure. What's wrong? I'm turning around right now. We have to hide somewhere in the city. Any idea where? Yes, the woman replied thoughtfully. Probably Betty's. What's this all about? And what I said, I'll explain later. Just hide the kids and write down Aunt Betty's address. I don't really remember where she lives. I'll come over tonight as soon as I can. Julia didn't wait for her mother's answer and hung up. She said everything that was needed, now it was impossible to delay. The girl realized that Liam would try to get to the children by any means necessary. And only God knows what will happen then. Soon the court would decide everything. In the meantime, she had to hide and keep her head down. She knew the law was on her side, but she had to protect herself. Her husband is completely out of control, crazy, aggressive. He needed to be treated but it was advisable for him to serve a couple of years in prison first to get his brain back in place. Toward evening, Julia received a message from her mother with an address. She immediately drove up to the place. The house was an ordinary, brick, gray, nine-story building. She dialed the code. She went up to the fifth floor and rang the doorbell. The exhausted mother felt only anxiety and excitement. After all, she hadn't seen her children all day. They must be under tremendous stress being in a strange apartment with a stranger. The door was opened by Betty, a friend of the mother's. She was quite thin, seemed to be suffering from anarchy. Julia, come in. Betty invited her in. As soon as Julia entered the apartment, 
the kids immediately ran up to her. Maria was crying, hugging her mom's leg, and David was standing proudly, facing her and smiling. Thank you for taking care of your little sister. His mother praised him, stroking his head. Julia looked around the hallway. The apartment was a three-room apartment to the right, leading down the hallway to the kitchen. To two sides were rooms with a door. One of them was open. The girl entered there and saw her mother sitting surrounded by two cats on the couch. She was reading a book, but as soon as Nancy heard footsteps approaching, she turned her head. Her face immediately seemed to glow. She must have been really looking forward to her daughter and must have been insanely worried. Julia, are you here? Nancy exclaimed, threw herself into her daughter's arms. What are you doing with that impulse freak? He was looking for the children. That's why I asked them to hide them here until the court date. No, but hopefully he'll contact me soon. I'm thinking of hiring a lawyer. Nancy gestured for Julia to sit down on the couch. But sweetie stretched out thoughtfully mother a lawyer costs money. I don't think we can afford one. For a case like this, I'm willing to get that money somewhere. Julia answered seriously. You don't know one thing, Nancy began, lowering her head. What is it? Tell me. You were right to send me here and not to the village. Liam today, he was there. That's what the neighbors told me. What did he want? Julia asked. She knew the answer to that question perfectly well. He asked people where we were, where David and Maria were, where we could go. But our neighbors are good, and they don't know anything. That's why your Liam is unanswered. He won't take my children, Julia said firmly. A few days later, Julia got a call from the police. A criminal case was opened. The trial was scheduled for the 20th of April. There were still two weeks left. By that time, she would have time to hire a lawyer. But in fact, she did not need a paid defense lawyer because all the evidence was there and there were enough witnesses. However, Julia decided to reinsure herself. As she was informed, Liam was also to receive a summons. Julia did not know where he was, how he was, but she was sure that he would show up to try to take the children away from her. Of course, all of this was taking its toll on her emotional state. She began to suffer from insomnia. Her doctor prescribed pills, but they didn't work. She took a walk with her children once every three days and tried not to go outside. Liam, though he was a drunk, was really dangerous. And after beating an innocent guy Kevin, with whom Julia risked going on a date, the girl thought that he was even capable of murder when he was under the influence. He's crazy and could do anything. Going out to the store or on errands, Julia. Looking back almost every minute, she was scared to death of being followed. She was literally shaking with it. However, these two weeks passed quietly. There were no attacks or threats. But each day pressed Julia more and more. Because of the stress, she didn't eat much. She stopped eating and stopped looking after herself. Sometimes she couldn't even bring herself to brush her teeth three days in a row. More and more often she slept in the middle of the day and couldn't wake up for a long time. This whole state was very similar to the beginning of depression. And now, finally, the crucial day of the trial had arrived. And it should happen that on this fateful and decisive day our plaintiff slept. She could not sleep all night, so and so, thinking about what we'll say and how to behave, and fell asleep only in the morning. When Julia got up and looked at the clock, her soul sank into the heels. Sweat broke out on her face and her heart raced. As she stood in someone else's bedroom, wearing an old stretchy t-shirt, the trial was already half an hour away from starting. Julia threw on her shirt and black pants in a panic, and surveying her, ran outside and hailed a cab. Her hands were shaking from overexertion, her lips trembling. She knew the judge wouldn't wait for her. The session had started on time, if it wasn't already over. As soon as the car slowed down, Julia jumped out of the car and ran into the building. There they tried to stop her, asking her some unnecessary questions. However, she looked like the guards just let her pass in peace. She just had to show up to the damn court, which had been going on for probably an hour already. When she burst into the courtroom, everyone present turned their indignant gazes on her. Who were all these total strangers to her, stone-faced, paying no attention to this public? She walked through and sat down in the plaintiff's seat. Her lawyer was simply furious, but Julia ignored his gaze as well. 
She turned her head to the right. Julia saw Liam. The asshole had shown up. He was wearing a smoothly laid out white shirt, jacket and tie. Yeah, she hadn't even seen him looking like that at a wedding. The scoundrel was so degraded, as if he hoped to win the case. But another thing struck her more. There was a man sitting next to Liam. And of course, it could only be his lawyer. Where did he get the money for a lawyer? He wasn't supposed to have a public defender, either. But they didn't stand a chance anyway. That's what Julia thought until the court issued its final judgment. The plaintiff's motion for dissolution of marriage is denied. Due to the failure of one of the spouses to appear in court, the plaintiff's request to deprive the defendant of parental rights is also decided to reject, as the plaintiff has not provided sufficient evidence and grounds for his claims. The defendant is ordered to pay a fine of $1,500 to the plaintiff for causing minor injury. Case dismissed. The world seemed to go out from under Julia's feet when she heard this decision. She turned around. No one in the audience was even surprised. The girl looked at her lawyer, looking for support, but received only disappointed. And glaring, he gathered his papers and left the hall. Julia rushed after him Nick, she shouted after him. Wait. Finally, the girl was able to catch up with him. Please, where are you going? Julia yelled. She was clearly speaking out of emotion. Victor stopped, lowering his head. He was very angry and upset. You could see it in him. Your case was on and simple. We could have not only punished that impertinent man, we could have quit him behind bars. But you didn't warn me about your punctuality. And that's how it turned out. I regret getting involved with you. Because now I have a terrible stain on my reputation. I could lose my clientele. I have nothing more to say to you. I wish you all the best. The lawyer said angrily and moved forward to the exit again. Julia remained standing outside the courtroom. She could not believe that her own mistake had played a cruel joke on her. Suddenly she felt very sick. She felt dizzy. Her eyes went black and her legs went weak. Pain seemed to throb in every cell of her body. She was shaking. Julia didn't even remember the moment when she lost consciousness. When she opened her eyes, the first thing she saw was a girl in a white robe and a white cap. She had placed something on the bedside table next to where Julia was lying. As soon as the nurse noticed that the patient had regained consciousness, she immediately rashly jumped out of the room. Julia turned her head with difficulty and looked around the room. It was an ordinary hospital room. She wanted to get up, but felt a sharp pain in her arm. Looking there, Julia saw a wire attached to her wrist. It looked like an IV. The woman tried to sit up, but any movement immediately caused a terrible pain in her head, especially in the back of her head. Suddenly Julia felt something warm running down the nose of her lip crease. When that liquid hit the tip of her tongue, the girl realized it was blood. She wanted to stop it, or at least wipe it off searching with her eyes for a tissue. But then a young doctor burst into the room. He was holding a clipboard with a lot of papers. As soon as the doctor saw the patient bleeding, he ran over to her and put a handkerchief to her nose. Eyes here, he shouted. The nurses running down the hallway should tilt their heads forward like this. He turned to Julia. She did as instructed. The blood flowed even more. But at that moment, a girl came and handed him a bag of ice cubes. The doctor immediately applied it to his nose. After a few minutes, the bleeding stopped. It was not that Julia was afraid of blood or that she had never had anything come out of her nose. However, such a quick change of events did not sit well with her. All she remembered was that she fell right in the courthouse. Everything else was a blur. Well, we stopped your blood, the doctor said smiling. Now we can get to know each other. My name is Robert. I will be your doctor. The girl looked at him with a meaningless look. Her head hurt so much that it took her a long time to get the meaning of what he said. Robert just raced Julia, writhing in pain. I have a very bad headache and I, oh yes, of course. That's what I've come to prescribe you medication for. Give me your left arm, please, asked the boy. The girl held out her hand to him, which had a catheter on it. The doctor unscrewed the cap. He checked something wrote it down in his papers and told the nurse to put new drugs into the system. After a few minutes Julia felt noticeably better. She rolled her eyes in pleasure. 
It had been a long time since she'd felt like this, like she'd been beaten over the head with a hammer all day and had needles stuck in her body. And now, right now she felt completely at peace. There was no pain, no pressure, no pulling. The world seemed to have moved away, narrowed down to the sides of this hospital room. Here, at last, nothing bothered her. She had even forgotten about the doctor's presence. Well, I see you're feeling better, Robert remarked. Then please listen to me. Julia opened her eyes and put them on your ears. She was now ready to take in information, so she looked intently at the man sitting in front of her. You lost consciousness for a reason. You had a hypertensive crisis. In simple terms, your blood pressure was very high. It could be due to stress, poor diet, lifestyle. A lot of factors go into it. But we're not in a physiology class to study all those causes. It is what it is. You have very poor hormones and a concussion from the fall. That's why you were brought to us. Now I'd like to suggest hospitalization. Hospitalization. No, I'm sorry, I have children. How long have I been here? Where are my children? What's wrong with my family? Julia bombarded the doctor with questions. Julia, please calm down. The first thing we did was notify your mother of your condition. I'm sure she's on her way here now. And also that your children are fine. No, he took them. Hell take them, they need to be hidden. Call the police, the girl shouted. A machine beeped. Behind her, Julia's head ached again and her heart began to pound frantically. Well, now we've got another blood pressure problem. Your body certainly doesn't need this kind of swing. Upset, the doctor said. Turning off the machine, he injected something into her vein again. What made the patient drowsy? The last words she heard were, you need to rest now, and then you'll sort out all your problems. And Julia fell back to sleep. Mom, where are the kids? Julia asked more seriously. The smile was gone from her face. I have them, dear, but not for long, it seems. Liam has declared his desire to take them away. While you are in the hospital, upset, Nancy replied. You can't give them to him. Mom, he's crazy. He could do anything. It's like giving your children to death, but there's nothing you can do. It's the court's decision. All because of me, Julia whispered. She wanted to cry, but she refrained from crying. They wouldn't help the problem. Honey, what did the doctor say to you? Did he suggest hospitalization? He says there's something wrong with my head. I mean, nerves. Do it. My mother answered right away. And David and Maria, that tyrant oppresses them, will destroy them. Julia, you've only been here one day. During this time, I managed to appeal against the court decision and also talked to Viktor Nikolaevich. He's ready to try again, which I've had time to do. You just have to know how to talk to people. Now please agree to be hospitalized. You'll get help here. I can't see my daughter anymore. I'm so miserable. You've completely lost your appetite. You're so nervous. You're developing depression. And I read it can lead to cancer. Mom. Julia interrupted her. What are you talking about? The woman covered her daughter's hand with her palm. We'll get out. I'll let you know everything that happens. Please get well. I want my beloved Julia back. Julia nodded understandingly and said goodbye to her mother. They agreed to call each other every day. The woman signed all the papers for hospitalization, and the next day she was transferred to another ward. She underwent all the tests, was prescribed treatment, and began her journey to recovery. Her attending physician was the same Robert. When they got to know each other better, Julia found out that he was 30 years old and had been practicing medicine all his conscious life. Medicine had been his calling since he was a child. He really turned out to be a good doctor, very caring, understanding, able to hear and listen just like in the TV series about doctors, and instilled in all his patients complete trust. Here the tortured young mother finally found a long-awaited rest. She often read, walked along the hospital square and paths, and slept a lot during the day. All these simple pleasures of life were not available to her in her previous ordinary life. Her husband never took her anywhere. There was no vacation at all. Work, house, children, laundry, cleaning, cooking. The biggest entertainment, walking in the playground and going to the supermarket. 
Here in the hospital Julia felt a breeze of freedom. She followed the regimen correctly, ate right, and tried not to be distracted by the outside threatening world. Every day she called her mother and she gave her all the news. Lion hadn't picked up the children yet and had disappeared. It was rather strange behavior because he was so eager to have them. But this, of course, was to her advantage. The children lived in the village, at Nancy's everyday walked, played, drank steamed milk. In general, at last they lived a quiet and normal life. A few days later, Nancy told Julia that the appeal had been heard, and she could try again to divorce Liam, as well as deprive him of custody. I couldn't be happier. Finally Julia could cut all ties with this tyrant and forget him forever. One night, the phone rang. The numbers read 315. It was very strange and frightening. It was my mother calling. My heart went back into my heels and sweat came out on my palms. Julia, Julia, are you asleep? Nancy shouted. Now Julia was finally awake. Did something terrible happen? No, mom's gone. What happened? Daughter. Liam, you're a Liam. A woman sobbed, as if it wasn't the first time she was hysterical. Mom. What happened? I came from the village to check on your apartment. Julia. There's nothing of value left there. He took everything, all the valuable appliances. Your jewelry, gold, even my mother's precious bracelet is gone. Oh my God. Julia whispered in horror. But baby, that's not the worst of it. Cried the woman. He somehow got into the bank under your name and took all the savings from the cards. We're completely destitute now. We have no money. The pension won't cover all the expenses, taxes, food, clothes. Now I'm asking the neighbors. This asshole has robbed us of everything. This news was the end of Julia. She was back to square one, to the state from which she had been struggling for a week. She wanted to cry and scream again. Liam had ruined her life, and now he'd sneak off like this. This time he was unlikely to show up in court to dissolve the marriage. He could have gone anywhere. Julia had been saving that money for a rainy day. One day she hoped to save enough to pay her children's university fees or buy them some sort of starter home. She never used that money she had saved for five years. How she hated her husband now, with every fiber of her scarred soul. The next day Julia did not wake up until close to lunchtime. She didn't even remember the nurse coming in early in the morning with the injections. In fact, she didn't feel like waking up at all. The staff seemed to notice. An hour later, Robert visited her. He knocked on the door and slowly entered the room. The guy sat down in the chair next to the bed. Julia, are you all right? He was concerned. The girl gave him an indifferent look and then nodded affirmatively. You didn't wake up as usual today, and you don't look so good. Everyone has bad days. Julia said quietly and sank back into the pillow. I don't deny it the same can't be said for you. Your emotional state has gotten much better over the past week, and the physical has picked up as well. My husband stole all my money, all my valuables and left me and my children in poverty. Julia blurted out angrily, as if this caring doctor was guilty of something. The doctor was stunned by this information. He was silent for a few minutes, and then said quietly, I'm sorry. Julia looked at him and smiled in annoyance and then burst out laughing hysterically. The whole thing resembled a scene from a horror movie. After all, the situation was definitely not humorous, and laughter had no place here. But the experienced doctor knew how to react. Julia, let me take you for a walk, he suggested. Are you at work, Robert? Julia replied indifferently, having finished laughing. Your patients are waiting for you. It's my job to help my patients. You need help now, so I suggest you take a walk," the doctor repeated insistently and firmly. Julia raised her eyebrows as if to show that she didn't care where they took her. She got out of bed, walked over to the nightstand and pulled out her jeans and rug, then pulled off her pajamas right in front of Robert Romanovich, which made him embarrassed and look away. He hadn't expected this patient to change clothes so unceremoniously in front of him. I'm ready, Julia said, standing up as still as a soldier. The doctor only smiled, understanding her behavior and gestured to leave the room. The hospital grounds were quite large. 
There were many smart corners, cozy benches, small squares. It was a pleasure to walk around. And Julia was really taking advantage of it until she found out about Liam's recent actions. So how exactly will you help me? Julia asked when they had walked a few meters. Robert was walking in step with her, but he was much taller, so she couldn't see the expression on his face. First, pretend I'm your friend, he said. She did. So Julia, tell me everything in order. What happened? And if I may, the backstory, Robert said in a more relaxed voice. And Julia, without expecting it, told him the whole story. She even liked that someone was interested in her problems, even though it was only her doctor. But now he was really good at playing the role of a true friend. So you still have a husband on your papers? Robert clarified. Yes, that's right. The situation is, shall we say, complicated, or I wouldn't be here. I need to get him to agree to a divorce, because otherwise it's going to get very complicated. I mean, we have kids. You know, a good friend of mine works for a very powerful law enforcement agency. I think he might be able to help you find your husband and the money he stole. That would be very nice of you, but you don't have to do that. After all, I am your friend now, not your attending physician, and I am ready to help you. Robert replied seriously. Julia only smiled back. It was a very nice gesture. On his part, she was flattered that at least someone in this world, other than her mother of course, was going to help her. She hardly had any real friends at all. Julia had always managed on her own. She was even a little flattered that such a handsome young doctor was paying attention to her. She felt a little better after that conversation. The next day Robert surprised her, he brought a whole bag of ice cream to the hospital. He even remembered that she was very fond of chocolate and bought her a lot of ice cream in that flavor. If he wanted to make her feel better, he really did it. You know, there's an amusement park near the hospital. Would you like to go? Robert suggested it. While he was giving the girl her medication. What about the regimen? Julia grinned. I'm your attending physician, so I strongly suggest you have fun. In a stern tone, he said and added more simply. Well, I have to go now, but I'll see you soon, Julia. Julia smiled back. She realized that Robert was paying attention to her for a reason. He liked her, and she herself could reciprocate such an interesting young man. But things were very uncertain between them. He's her attending physician, so dating him would be wrong somehow. The same as dating a professor from her department. However, Robert was helping her and her family with the search for Liam. Today, just before the ice cream surprise, a very serious man with terribly penetrating steely eyes and a strict expensive suit came straight to her room, asked all the details, photographed the documents and said that he would take the case. Apparently, Robert was not deceived. He really had connections in the authorities. Julia felt that this time things were getting better, and her health was also returning. Soon Julia was discharged. She seemed to be completely healthy. As fate would have it, Liam was also found on the same day. He was immediately taken into custody until the trial, which was to take place a few days later on May 18. And that day, Julia did not sleep. She had not yet gone to visit the children, who were all right in the village with their mother, and had decided to devote all her time to recovering from such a long absence in the apartment she had left completely livable. Indeed, there was no more washing machine, microwave or television. But that didn't really stop her from being there. She stopped washing all her things, the floors noticed the new bed. But her spirits were already calmer. In the evening, she got a text from Robert. Hi, I hope you're awake. Going outside, Julia was surprised and typed the quite logical question why. Just go outside, Julia, replied Robert and walked off the net. This really intrigued her. She left her coat and actually rushed to the exit. She couldn't wait to find out what Robert was up to. And this guy was really turning out to be a romantic. As soon as Julia came out of the entrance, she saw a huge bouquet of roses dot, and behind these luxurious flowers hid a smiling Robert. He walked up to his former patient and handed her this gorgeous bouquet. Julia, I realize you just got out of the hospital and we saw each other this morning. The guy started off tentatively and maybe none of this is at all appropriate right now. But I want you to be my girlfriend. 
Julia was quite a bit surprised at the proposal. She was sure that sooner or later Robert would ask her to go out with him. Women always sense these things. But in order to do it in such a big way, with such approaches and gorgeous flowers, you know that now you have to make the proposal even cooler. Julia joked. The guy nodded affirmatively, but you could see in his eyes that he was nervous and waiting for an answer. He folded his hands behind his back and shifted from foot to foot. In a way Julia even liked that he was so worried. It seemed awfully sweet, but she decided not to torture him anymore and gave him a very specific answer. Well, of course, I agree to be your girlfriend. The guy almost jumped for joy. He approached Julia and kissed her gently on the lips, and she was over the moon. How long it had been since she had felt free from all the obligations of freshmen who had just confessed their love. From that moment on, they became a couple, and Robert was not at all embarrassed by the fact that Julia was already married. In a couple of days, the matter would be settled. And if not, he would do everything to get this Liam away from his beloved forever. He was not embarrassed by the fact that Julia had two children. On the contrary, he always dreamed of having kids. He was good with children and would be a great father. Robert was really a wonderful young man. Of course, Nancy was sure to like him, but she didn't know he existed yet. Julia decided it would be best to keep quiet about him for the time being. Until the relationship with her ex was cleared up. Of course, that news could wait. To her mother, Robert was simply being her attending physician good, and had already discharged her from his care as an attending physician, nothing more. The day of the trial kept getting closer and inevitably came. This time Julia set 22 alarm clocks so that she would definitely not oversleep. There would be no other chance. She woke up herself even earlier than the alarm. Calmly she got up, had breakfast, got ready and drove to the courthouse. With Robert, they had agreed that he would not appear in public for the time being to avoid unnecessary publicity. There was no telling how the judge or anyone else would react to him. For example, her mother, like Julia last month, saw Liam at another table, to her right. Only this time he was in handcuffs. And today he looked tired, angry, and doomed. Of course, justice was completely on her side this time. Julia's lawyer provided all the documents that were very good arguments against Liam. The ex-husband was assigned a public defender this time. Julia was even a little upset. She wanted at least some kind of fight, even though she knew that she would be the winner of the story. But she thought there would be some resistance from Liam. But her husband was already completely down, resigned to his fate, and he didn't care about himself or his life to the citizen for theft on a particularly large scale to assign criminal punishment, which entails imprisonment for five years. Also in the framework of civil proceedings to assign compensation for the harm caused in the amount of. Read monotonously the judge. The next court hearing took place in another hall. This time about the dissolution of marriage, Lyon was no longer here. He was taken away from the previous one and taken into custody. Julia stood again and listened as the judgment was read out. The marriage to citizen Julia is dissolved custody of the minors. David and Maria is fully transferred to the legal representative of the birth mother of the minors Julia, citizen Liam. The payment of alimony in the amount established by applicable law from all types of income shall be ordered. This decision is final, shall enter into legal force. Something else was said. But all words merged for Julia in one simple phrase, everything is over. The trial is over. Her marriage to Liam is dissolved. She and the children were no longer in danger. How relieved was she? Finally, everything in the courtroom came into motion. The judge withdrew. The clerk of the court was folding papers. Nancy immediately ran up and wrapped her daughter in her arms to congratulate her on her victory. Daughter, this story is finally over. How happy am I? We must celebrate!" exclaimed Julia's mother, walking with her to the exit of the courthouse, so strangely pronounced Julia. I've been here two whole times, but I'm walking out of this building with my own feet, she laughed for the first time. Her mother gave her a wary look and supported her under her elbow. But as soon as they were out, Julia was seized with chills, and she almost fainted again. At the bottom of the stairs, where the high steps ended, stood Robert, again with a huge bouquet of roses. 
Nancy immediately looked questioningly at her daughter, and Julia stood in complete shock at what was happening. Joy, bewilderment, and even anger mingled in her. They had agreed. They had agreed not to tell anyone about their relationship. But Robert had made up his mind for everyone. Julia had no choice but to smile at her mom, take her hand and walk over to her new boyfriend. Mom, trying to play her part, joyfully began Julia, this is Robert, my young man. You know him already, but not in this capacity. At the same moment, the former doctor handed Nancy a second bouquet of roses, which he hid behind his back. Julia gave him a judgmental look, but she couldn't make a scene in front of her mother. Nancy, as her face eloquently testified, must also have been amazed at all that was going on. But the flowers softened her, and she said, Robert, it's a pleasure. You know, we won the case. Yes, there was no doubt about that, Robert replied with a smile. There was an awkward silence between them. Then Nancy spoke up again. Would you like to celebrate with us? It's a wonderful occasion. Robert looked at Julia, who with her eyes begged him not to agree, but of course he did the exact opposite. Of course, the esteemed Nancy helped him mother Julia. Together, they got into Robert's car and drove to Julia's apartment. While the children were being watched by Nancy's friend Betty, the adults were preparing a holiday dinner. Nancy watched TV and cut everything for the olive salad. Robert stood in front of the stove cooking calamari and Julia was washing dishes next to him. I still can't understand why you did that. Julia whispered to Nikolai. Did what nonchalantly? He interrogated, tasting it. Is the water salty enough? I told you not to advertise our relationship. This is the time. But you didn't listen to me. I think your mother liked me, the boy smiled turning to Nancy and checking to see if she was still here. Undoubtedly, you know how to make a good impression, but you completely ignored my request. My mother wasn't prepared for this. She's been under so much pressure over the last month. And the last thing she wants to know is that I'm having an affair with my own doctor. Oh, you say that like you're 17 years old. Julia decided not to continue this argument. She was still hurt that her request was simply ignored. To what you are to each other, Nancy toasted and everyone clinked glasses. Already relaxed and happy, Robert and Julia kissed. Now she was determined to forget her silly childhood grudge. Robert had done everything very nicely, and the introduction to his mother had really succeeded. And let me ask you, Robert turned to Julia. When did they end up in the bedroom? Where is your father? What's wrong with him? Julia looked at the boy upset and depressed. This was clearly not the best topic of discussion. But since he was interested in all the details of her life, it obviously meant something. An indifferent person wouldn't ask such things. Though maybe it was a matter of some alcohol consumption, whatever it was, Julia still wanted to share the story. He died a short death, the girl reported. A car accident? Robert guessed. Guessed. Julia replied indifferently. Listen, I have a headache. Let's go to bed. Finally, Julia could sleep normally, without any bad backward thoughts. A week later, Robert asked Julia to go away. It was already summer at the country house. The kids could frolic in nature, and they could take a break from the hustle and bustle of the city. Julia immediately accepted this wonderful offer. Nancy, on the other hand, decided to return to her village. In a couple of days, all the things were packed, and the couple went on their long-awaited vacation, the trip took three hours, but it was a lot of fun. All the way they listened to music, talked, socialized with the kids. They looked like a real happy family. The house turned out to be quite large, two floors, five bedrooms, a great plot, and across the street a pond there was a vegetable garden and beds of flowers over which butterflies and buzzing. Bees, just the truest paradise on earth. Robert inherited this house from his father. He didn't know much about it, but he was certainly a very good man, otherwise he wouldn't have been able to create such a lovely place. Julia had never felt such pleasure in living with someone else, comparing Liam to Robert. She concluded that they were as different as heaven and earth. Sweetheart, I suggest we go on a picnic. There's a nice lake nearby where there's hardly anyone around. Let's take David and Maria and have a rest ourselves, said Robert, looking into the bedroom to his beloved, who was brushing her hair. Julia agreed. They packed the necessary things, 
took a ball for the children and badminton for themselves, and drove to the lake. The area was indeed very beautiful, exactly as Robert had described it. Peace, nature, silence, grace. Julia felt like she was in paradise. The children were dancing by the shore and Julia was enjoying the sun and trying to get an even tan. Suddenly a thought occurred to her, you're going back to work next week, so the children and I have to leave too. Robert thought for a moment and then answered no, of course you can stay here. It's only a couple hours by train, so I can come back here every day. Great Julia was pleased. Then I'll do the cleaning and you can't clean with me. I'm taking a vacation now, and then I want to start running the household. Since you're the one who works here, I'll be in charge of the house in a fair way. A week went by as planned. Robert left for work first thing in the morning. Julia fed the children and sent them for a walk to the daycare center. She could watch them from the window, so she didn't worry about their safety. She decided to start cleaning first on the first floor and then go higher. She washed all the dishes, made dinner, scrubbed the floors by the window, and threw out the trash. The kitchen shone like new. The second floor proved easier to clean than the first. There were no greasy surfaces, so she just dusted and washed the windows. Julia was about to finish cleaning up, but then she saw the attics and doors right in the ceiling of the small hallway. She pulled on the handle and the door fell off almost over her head. The bottom staircase popped out at her. How could she not have noticed the attic here before? Robert had never mentioned it. Julia decided to look in there and see what was in there to her disappointment. Nothing interesting. She didn't find any dust. Lots of dust, cobwebs and dirt. It was a very cozy place. If it were cleaned up, you could read. It was rainy in the evenings and the rain would pound on the window. But Julia decided not to touch the attic yet. She had to ask Robert's permission in case it was a family place of power and the souls of dead relatives nested there. And this attic could not be opened at all. In general, Julia decided to wait for the consent of her young man, who was the owner of the house at dinner. The impromptu family sat in the kitchen and talked. David, all ears were buzzing about school because in September he was to go to the first grade. The boy was very worried about it and almost every day asked questions about studies in school. Was it difficult? Would he learn everything there? Julia was tired of answering these questions 10 times, so she just forced him to eat, saying sternly, when I eat, I am deaf and dumb. Sweet Julia, having had another salad all day, wanted to ask you, what is that attic you have upstairs? Robert was a little surprised that such an abandoned room was discovered by zealous cleaners. No one's ever been up there. 100 years of dust and cobwebs, I guess, she replied. I noticed that oddly enough, and it can be cleaned up, cleaned up, Robert marveled. Well, I mean clean it up, Julia explained, laughing merrily. Oh yes, of course. I'm sure you'll find a lot of junk that belongs in a dumpster or a flea market, so I'm all for it, he smiled. But watch out, don't take, labor, and wear a mask. Such perennial dust can give you allergies. Carefully added the good doctor. On this, they came to an agreement. The next day, Julia was well prepared, armed with mops, gloves, disposable masks, and huge buckets of water. There was a whole lot of work to be done. First, they had to remove all the cobwebs and free the attic from the dust that had been lying there for years. From time to time, she was distracted by children, cooking, and other household chores. So the cleaning took a few days. The first two days she just cleaned the dust and dirt where she could. And on the third day she started to sort things out. There was an old heavy sled, a broken lampshade, a lot of boxes with yellowed from time food, 100-year-old paper, children's toys. But they were going nowhere, and most of them Julia threw away. Finally, she got to a big sturdy box where she bought various folders, albums, and some ancient documents. The girl decided to open one of them. It turned out to be a family photo album. The photos were full of people she didn't recognize, most likely Robert's relatives. She did not study the face of each person, as there were a whole bunch of photos and almost all of them were joined. She decided to flip through the album. When would there be time? and shoved it back into the box. 
Finally, she had taken her cleaning to its logical conclusion. Now it was safe to be here without fear of bumping into a rusty nail or breathing in allergic dust. Julia opened the attic window to ventilate and climbed down from the attic. It was time to feed the children. Robert would be home from work soon. The clock was already showing 10 o'clock p.m. But Robert still wasn't home. Julia began to worry. The children had been in bed for a long time and were having sweet dreams. Outside, a thunderstorm was brewing. The starry sky was covered with a shroud of gray clouds. The temperature was steadily dropping. The atmospheric pressure was dropping. It was unpleasant and uncomfortable to be outside. But Julia sat on the porch in her thin robe. As she slipped the warm plaid over her shoulders, each minute pressed her more and more. Maybe something had happened to Robert. Some bandits attacked him on the way, stumbled and fell into a ditch, lost his way. The girl was terribly worried about her lover. He didn't answer the phone. He didn't answer her messages either. Every cell of her body was nervous and oh God. Finally, Julia saw a dark figure with an umbrella. Walking toward the house, it was Robert. At first, she was freaked out that the guy was walking. He has a car, but then she remembered that he took the electric train to work. That's very nice. Time in morning and evening traffic. The car ate him up a lot more. When Robert approached his waiting lover, she threw herself into his arms and almost cried. But where have you been? She sobbed. She was really frightened by the absence of her beloved. Robert lifted her head and looked her straight in the eyes, as if piercing her soul. He was smiling. Droplets of water were oozing from his sweet, good, two-day stubble cheeks. Why are you smiling? Julia marveled. Robert gently pulled Julia away. Ira closed his arms. And then she realized everything. He got down on one knee and took the small box out of his pocket. No, she stretched out, unable to believe her happiness. Please tell me this isn't a dream. Robert continued to smile and then opened the box. There was a real white gold engagement ring. My dear, the boy began formally enough. We've been through so much together. And there isn't a day that goes by that I don't think of the first time we met. The very day when you were sitting on the bed in the hospital room and trying to stop that miserable nosebleed. He laughed and then took on a serious expression, Julia, sweet Julia, I love you terribly much. And every day my love for you grows stronger. Your children are the sweetest creatures and yourself. You're my angel. In this lovely, no, I'm not arguing, it's really beautiful weather. I want to propose to you. Julia, you will be mine. Julia was bursting with emotion. She cried, rejoiced, got nervous and cried again, with tears of genuine happiness. Finally, after calming down a bit and regaining her breath, she answered him with a smile on her face. Yes, and reached out her hand, Robert put his ring on her ring finger, and they merged in a tender kiss. It was an evening Julia would remember forever. She had never liked rain, but now it was associated only with something sublime and light, the truest happiness. All the next day she looked at it. This wonderful new piece of jewelry on her finger, symbolizing conjugal love. The ring was indeed white gold, but the best thing about it was the blue sapphire shining in the light. A ring like this was a must-have, and Julia was overjoyed. She was envious of herself, Julia decided not to tell her mother the news over the phone. She decided to visit her on the pretext that she missed her. It was a day off and the children were left in Robert's care. Julia took the train and in a few hours she was in her mother's village. She hadn't been here for quite some time, not since her first failed marriage it seemed. Julia remembered spending all her vacations here, all her early childhood. Before her mother had moved to the city, she had lived here, studied here became a city girl only when she entered the institute. Although now this place and village it was hard to call it. More than 3,000 people lived here, and this place was considered an urban-type village. There was all the necessary infrastructure, stores, hospital, school, kindergarten, and the church was very old, restored, and even a small movie theater. Almost all the amenities of big cities could be found. And here in this cozy, quiet place, Julia exclaimed, and the mother let the girl into the house. You're finally here. I missed you so much. 
I haven't seen you in over two months. David will be going to school soon. Juliet entered the house laughing. Only her mother seemed to have that kind of optimism. She could ask questions right from the doorstep without even waiting for answers. Nancy invited her daughter into the kitchen, poured tea, and sat down at the table. So tell me, what school are you going to? The mother continued. Did you ask about David? Oh, mom is not before school now laughed back Julia. This reaction very surprised Hope, and that returned the eyebrows and built on her face, not understanding grimace. And to what, sweetheart? Don't you notice anything? Julia hinted. Then she would take the mug with her right hand, then fix her hair. But doesn't mommy notice anything? Nancy still looked at her like Julia was crazy. It was even upsetting. After all, she had tried so hard to do everything she could to make her mom figure it all out for herself. Suddenly, there was a twinkle in Nancy's eye. She was getting excited, but she finally realized it. Pregnant? Shocked. Asked the mother. Julia almost fell off the chair from such an assumption. This was something she had not expected. And how could she even think of such a thing? No, mom, what are you doing? Julia was indignant. Her mother still did not understand anything, and it was getting awkward. Then the girl gave in and held out her hand. Nancy gasped in surprise and looked at the expensive ring. But Robert marveled at her mother. Well done. That ring cost a fortune. Julia smiled broadly. At last someone appreciated her young man. Not that she liked to brag, but sometimes she wanted to say so. I have a man who loves me. Of course, Nancy immediately called all her relatives to share the good news. Julia sat there with a feeling of complete satisfaction. Now she is truly appreciated. She's loved. All her misfortunes are gone after meeting Robert, the man with whom they are so much alike. Like soulmates who were separated long ago. Mom, will you be a princess soon? Maria asked as she was being tucked into bed. Julia smiled at her daughter and answered yes. I will be a real princess in a white dress. She kissed the girl on the forehead and closed the bedroom door. Robert was standing in the hallway. Well, princess, let's get into your fiddling, the guy joked. Julia jokingly slapped him on the shoulder or how dare you. The days went by. It was the middle of August. The children were picking currants in the garden and Julia was reading a book. Suddenly she remembered that she really wanted to make a cozy corner in the attic. It was not for nothing that she had sorted it out there. When she got there, she found the box where the album had been kept. She was so excited to take a closer look at it. Today was a free day, the perfect time to fulfill that wish. The first picture was of a man with a bushy mustache. He was holding a cigarette and looked very serious. This man left a gloomy impression, so Julia quickly turned the page. On the next one there was a common picture. There were many strangers standing there, in the background was the very house, the house they were living in now. There were about 10 people in the picture. It gave the impression that this picture was of a huge family. The children here were about six, seven years old. Suddenly, she noticed a familiar face. Hiding her eyes, she took a closer look. Oh my God! Julia almost fainted with amazement. In the girl standing among the other children in this picture, in a girl in a light summer dress with lantern sleeves, she recognized herself as a child. Oh yes, the same chubby cheeks, the funny pigtails. She looked so happy. Only now Julia doesn't remember any of that. Never suspected she'd been to this house before. No matter how hard she tried, it's like she erased that span of time. She didn't remember these people, not the place itself. Everything seemed completely unfamiliar. Julia was already beginning to doubt her own memory and vision. Maybe she had labeled herself and was a completely different girl in the picture. And now she didn't even have her old childhood picture to compare with this one. But still something told her that it was her in the picture. Julia decided to wait for Robert and find out from him. After all, this is his house. Surely he would know the history of the photograph. This fact was really confusing and even frightening. Robert came back late. It was raining outside again and he came in completely soaked. Julia was sitting in the kitchen drinking tea and waiting for him to deign to join her. Hi, honey. Through force, the guy smiled, kissed his favorite. She responded with a sincere smile. How are things at work? Julia asked. 
Today was quite a hard day. We brought in a patient with a brain injury. All day long they have been trying to get her out. Robert replied in a tired voice. Is that how you work? Don't you think it's time for a little rest? We'll get some rest on our wedding trip, Julia. In the meantime, I'm earning for the trip. Why don't you go to bed? It's late. I waited for you. I'm worried. The weather outside again like that night, like that night, she confirmed with a smile on her face. Actually began Julia, moving closer to her lover. I wasn't waiting for you just for this. So intrigued, Robert stretched out. The girl moved the album that was on the table to herself and opened the page. She pointed her finger at the girl, who looked an uncanny resemblance to herself, but Robert only looked at her questioningly. He didn't understand what this child had to do with them. But it was a matter of course. Julia had changed a lot since then. She no longer had that puffy counter and her hair was a darker shade, but the look of the big brooding eyes remained the same. But don't you see? Julia asked, not understanding why only she could see the resemblance. What should I see? Robert answered in surprise, it's me. Julia confessed, pointing to the girl in the picture. And I can't understand how I ended up here. This place is completely unfamiliar to me. That's very strange, the boy said taking the picture in his hands and studying each person in the picture. I don't remember it either. However, there he is, me, Robert pointed to the lower right corner. A pool light boy sat on an iron pail and smiled. Where did you get this picture? Julia inquired. After his mother died, all the unnecessary documents and photos were put away in the attic. It's been more than 15 years. Probably the mother or father might have known something about it. But unfortunately, or fortunately, we will never know. Julia visibly darkened. She was very embarrassed by the pictures, and she had hoped that she would find out when she met Robert. But he didn't know anything either. It was terribly frustrating. She would probably never know the secret of that photograph again. So wait. Robert started and then hesitated. It was as if he was considering whether or not to say it. Maybe. Maybe my sister knows something about it. You have a sister. Julia shouted. She covered her mouth because it sounded too loud. But luckily the children didn't wake up. Yes, Robert grinned. Her name is Kate. Why don't you go see her tomorrow? I'll give you the address. True, she lives in the city. But I guess two hours won't make a difference. You have a sister. And you never told me about it. That's all you care about. Robert laughed. Julia was shocked by the information she had received. She had learned so much today. Tell me the address, she said firmly. The next day Julia had breakfast and decided to go to her sister. She wanted to know the truth. These mysteries frightened her. It seemed to her as if all these secrets had some very great significance. Why couldn't she remember anything? Who were all those people in the picture? How did she end up here? She was sure that none of this had anything to do with Robert that they didn't know each other before they met today. But it seemed that wasn't true. Julia had to take the children with her because they couldn't be left alone at home. They were too young. I wonder if they will remember this house in the future. After all, she and Robert were about the same age as her children in those years. From where? Where did she come from in that photograph? Finally, by an effort of will, Julia pushed those thoughts away. All in good time and surely she would hear some sort of explanation soon. Tonight she would find out. Julia really hoped that Kate knew something. After two o'clock roads, she and her children finally approached the house where Robert's sister lived and before and before. Screaming girl opens the door, Julia rang the doorbell. Kate turned out to be very beautiful. You could think that she was a model, slim figure, hard glass waist, which is scary to touch in case it breaks graceful curls falling to her shoulders. The girl had no makeup on, but she still looked beautiful. Who are you? Kate asked in amazement, scrutinizing Julia and her children. Didn't Robert warn you? Julia was surprised. She was very embarrassed. She had barged into the apartment of a strange girl who was obviously not expecting guests. No, Kate stretched out uncertainly. I'm his fiance. It's nice to meet you. Julia said and held out her hand. Kate stood there in complete shock. She seemed to be with a man and amazed at the same time. Beyonce? Robert's sister asked. 
yes, and I just recently learned of your existence myself. Julia tried to make a joke. I realize this may sound crazy, but won't you let me in? It took me two hours to get here with the kids, and we were very tired on the road, as we spent almost the whole trip in trains and buses. Yes, yes, of course. Kate apologized and let them into the apartment. The apartment was very clean. As if it had just been renovated, the white walls were decorated with paintings and there were flowers somewhere. Kate invited them into the living room and offered them tea. Julia and the kids agreed, of course. How come I don't know that my brother has a fiancé? Kate asked with a smile. Pouring tea into mugs. I didn't know Robert had a sister. It just all happened so fast. That's probably why Robert hasn't realized it yet. Don't talk about him like he's a child. I'll talk to him about it. He's always hiding his personal life from me. I always find out from people I know. I didn't really come here to complain. Julia started it. Robert said you could help, but I'm listening, darling. Oh yes, sorry, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Julia. Now, we've been living together a long time. I understand it's on your shared school and home. I don't go there very often. It's mostly where my brother lives. Kate noticed this summer. I decided to clean it up. Julia continued. And in the attic, I found an interesting picture. Julia took the picture out of the pocket of her bag, folded it in half and held it out. Kate looked at the picture for a long time, smiling. Julia noticed this reaction and asked, do you know anything about this picture? Of course, I was with my father at the time and took the picture of us. Here on the left is my good friend, Helen. Behind her are a couple other guys from home and this girl. And then Kate hesitated. She glanced at Julia, then back at the picture, as if comparing it. Her eyes rounded. It was like she felt sick because she started to faintly, swaying. There's nothing wrong with you. And Julia was worried. Kate turned her gaze back to Julia on the street. She didn't look so calm and cheerful anymore. She was clearly scared of something. Do you know something? You know, I explained to Julia in this photo. But Kate didn't seem to care about that information. She was silent and ignored all questions. Excuse me, please, I forgot. I have a conference call with my coworkers today, which starts in a couple minutes. I'm sorry, but I have to say goodbye to you. Kate finally spoke. Julia was completely shocked by this turn of events. She didn't understand why that picture had caused Kate such a reaction. It was as if she hadn't agreed on something. But no sooner had Julia protested than she found herself at the front door. At the last moment, she managed to take the picture away from Kate. Sister Robert didn't even deign to say goodbye. She simply closed the door as if in a trance and left Julia with the children on the landing. There was nothing to do, so they walked home. All the way home, Julia couldn't understand what had happened at Kate's house. Why did she have that strange look on her face? Something was definitely wrong. They arrived home in the evening. Robert, to everyone's surprise, was already home. The children immediately ran to the communal table. So who's going to wash their hands? Julia scolded them. The poor things were dragged to the sink while the children washed their hands. Robert asked his favorite, who was pouring the soup, how the meeting with Kate was going. Did you find out what you wanted? No, upset, Julia replied in a tired voice. Turns out she didn't even know you proposed to me. I'm just not on good terms with her, Robert replied. He seemed to be telling the truth, so Julia stopped being angry with him. She was so tired that she didn't even bother to ask what his problem was with her sister. They had dinner and went to bed quite early. But it was not an easy day. Julia couldn't sleep for more than two hours because of the intrusive thoughts that were going through her head. If a day ago she didn't care about that old photo, now she was wondering how she had gotten there. Kate must have known something, but why didn't she say what she was hiding? The next morning, Julia decided to go to her mother's house. She persuaded a neighbor to babysit the kids while no one was home and went to the village. Definitely didn't expect to see her, Nancy at this time flashed the vegetable garden and did not expect to see her grown-up daughter in front of her. Oh my God, shouted out her daughter. But you gave me such a heart attack. Hi, mom. Julia said hello rather indifferently. She had been up all night and her condition left much to be desired. We need to talk. The woman looked at her daughter suspiciously and she didn't look good. 
bruises under her eyes dry lips. A sickly look has never made anyone look good. Are you sick? Nancy was worried. No, mom, please, it's very important. You have to help me. They went into the house. The first thing Nancy did was make tea. And then they could sit down at the table. Nancy always said you can't have a dialogue without tea. Tea is a special brew that encourages conversation, especially on heartfelt topics. As soon as they sat down, Julia got right down to business. She pulled out a picture and gave it to her mother, accompanying it with the words, do you know how I could have ended up in this picture? Nancy put on her glasses and took a closer look. The reaction was exactly the same as Catherine's. Nancy threw the picture away as if the devil himself was looking at her. Mom, what are you doing? Julia asked, not understanding her mother's actions. You're supposed to know where your daughter is from. I'm right in this picture. Yes, stretched the woman enigmatically, but it's all on me. Enough of your riddles. Who don't I come to? They respond like they're in a trance. What's wrong with an ordinary photo from 100 years ago? I just wanted to know what I was doing there. You're my mother, you know that. Julia couldn't stand it and said what she thought. She couldn't say such words to Katya because it would be simply impolite. She is a complete stranger. But with the mother, it's a different story. Do they have no secrets from each other, or do they have any that mom is keeping from her? The woman didn't answer. She sat in complete silence and looked at the photo in front of her, as if going through, flickers and memories. Mom, well, what are you hiding from me? Julia begged. You were there when that picture was taken. Nancy raised her eyes to her daughter. They were wet with tears. And Julia was afraid. Maybe she'd done something wrong. Her mother had said the wrong thing. You shouldn't have taken it out on her like that. It wasn't her fault. Mom, I'm sorry, don't cry, please, Julia apologized. Oh my God, it's just an old picture. And the mother was almost hysterical. Julia must have pushed her too hard. I can't. Nancy finally spoke up. Julia, I'm sorry, I can't. Why not? What's wrong with this picture? Or is there a bad story behind it? Daughter, please. The mother sobbed. Now Julia didn't understand anything at all. Why her mother was hiding something so zealously. She's crying her eyes out. You don't need to know. I wanted to keep it a secret forever. I didn't want Nancy to whine. Mom, it's really important to me. That's my fiancé in that picture. I'm really wondering why we used to know him. I don't remember that. Do you know something? So tell me if it's Tommy's fiancé. The woman started stuttering. Robert, yes, he is. And Julia pointed to the boy on the right. Suddenly, Nancy had a heart attack. She rolled her eyes and began to breathe slowly and heavily. Julia was very frightened, fearing her mother was having a seizure or heart attack. She jumped up, looking for the pills. After taking them, Nancy gradually calmed down. When she felt better, she went to someone and took out from there also herbal sedative, with shaking hands poured it into a glass of water and placed it. Then she drank the mixture very quickly in a volley. Then she stood at the table for a couple more minutes, and then returned to Julia. Okay to write, I shouldn't be hiding things from you. It's not right. I'd rather you find out the truth, but you don't regret it afterward. What did you ask me? Because I'm about to say something that's gonna change your life. Julia was already in the mood for a serious conversation. She was scared and curious at the same time. She would finally find out why everyone was so afraid of that picture. It's been a long time since Nancy started. It's about your father. You know he cheated on me in my marriage and we ended up divorced. But you don't know one very important detail, his mistress, and he had a secret son, a son who was born. While I was still unaware of the infidelity, a few years later you were born, and then the whole mistress thing came out. But Julia, the worst part, is that he's your father's secret son. I realize now that this is your Robert. Julia felt her heart stop, and then her breath began to pound at breakneck speed. Was she dizzy? No, she stretched out, and tears came to her eyes. No, this can't be true. It's a lie. No. The mother took her daughter's hand for support. Julia's face was as if petrified. It expressed no emotion. Only tears showed her true state. Mom, no, cried Julia. The photo was taken by your father when he took you to visit them at their house. 
Nancy continued, you and Robert are blood brother and sister. But why? Why doesn't Robert remember anything? Julia tried to justify herself. Your father was in a car accident when you weren't even a family. That's why you don't remember it. Your brain blocks out all the bad ones. You don't remember Robert because his birth certificate lists a completely different man, his mother's husband, as his father. Yeah, she cheated on her husband too. These two must have seen each other from afar. The mother was angry. God, no, that's impossible, I couldn't. Honey, we all make mistakes. It wasn't easy for me to tell you all this. I should probably go home, Julia said, getting up from the table. She was still dizzy, but she couldn't be here anymore and feel this awful awkwardness. After all, both mom and Julia understood perfectly well what had really happened. Julia was coming out with her own brother, a half-brother with her own father's son. Not only that, she was going to marry him and bear him a child. These vile thoughts and food were climbing into her head and it was disgusting just thinking about it. Nancy saw her poor daughter off, though she herself was in a terribly depressed state. Not only was she remembering all that long ago nightmare which she found out about her husband's cheating, but so was her daughter. Their mutual daughter lives with his sidekick. Arriving at the house, Julia hesitated to enter the house for a long time. She did not know what Robert's reaction would be to this terrible news. She paced around the garden in circles. Julia, you're back. What are you doing here? Let's go home, Robert said, stepping out onto the porch. The poor girl didn't even dare look him in the eye. She was ashamed and disgusted. She was sick of herself. The problem wasn't that the man she spent all her days and nights with turned out to be her own brother. The problem was something else. She still loved him, even after learning such a horrifying truth. She continued to love him as her man. She couldn't think of anything that could happen. Poor children, they already think of him as their father, and he's their uncle. Finally, Julia went inside. Robert was sitting alone in the kitchen, looking out the window at the garden. It was a very clear starry sky today. Every star was visible in this dark sky. The children were already asleep. Robert said in a calm, even voice. He came close to Julia and hugged her, then whispered in her ear, maybe we won't sleep tonight. Julia almost threw up at those words. They used to make her feel passionate. Now there was only disgust. Julia jerked away from Robert. What are you doing? He asked in surprise. Sorry, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. She said and walked down the stairs. She wanted to tell him everything, but she couldn't. She didn't have the strength. She just didn't. And she didn't want to cry at the first word. But on the other hand, she felt so bad about the terrible news she was hiding from the man she loved, and what to say she still loved. She lay down on the bed and had already closed her eyes when suddenly she heard footsteps, and then warm hands, embracing her and stroking her. In another situation, she would have smiled and moved closer. But now she only pushed Robert away and got out of bed. Julia looked at him with horror and disgust. Julia, what's going on? Robert was starting to get angry and perplexed. Nothing. She answered quickly. Julia, the man insisted. And then the girl could not stand it. She cried and sat on the edge of the bed. Robert sat down next to her and put his arms around her. She moved away from him again. Robert was crying. Julia, it's awful. What's awful, sweetie, we can't. We can't be together. Stammering with tears and spasms in her soul, Julia said almost. But she interrupted him with this terrible sudden news, which she uttered so quickly, as if she was afraid she would lose her voice afterward. You're my brother. Robert looked at her in confusion. That's not a funny joke at all, Julia. Finally, he answered. The girl sobbed again. It was so absurd that he didn't even believe her. It's not a joke, Julia cried. This is a nightmare. After calming down a little, she told him where she had gone and what she had learned. Robert couldn't believe his ears. The girl he loved more than life turned out to be his sister. But he was still a doctor, so he believed. First of all, the facts. That's why he was sober. How did his long medical practice teach him? He didn't lose his temper or go on a bender. He just weighed the pros and cons. I know you trust your mother, and she would never lie to you. 
but do you think it might make sense to do a genetic test? Robert suggested after a while. You know, everybody makes mistakes. Can we just take these creepy things at face value? Can we just believe something we have no proof of? Ruin our lives, destroy our love. Julia was very hesitant at first, but Robert convinced her to do it. The next day, they took their genetic material and waited for the results. The results were not due until a week later. So for a whole week, they had to live in limbo. Of course, this had a terrible effect on their communication and on the atmosphere in the house in general. Now one could not hear any silly jokes or laughter in the house at all. Everyone walked around nervous and gloomy. At this time, the couple decided to sleep separately. Robert slept on the sofa in the living room. Julia stayed on the bed. Mom, when will you be a princess in a white dress? Asked Maria at dinner one day. After these words, Julia almost cried. She looked at Robert, but she did not see any support in his eyes. He just looked away. Was it hard for him to take it all in? I'm not sure, sweetheart. All in good time. Julia replied plaintively, which satisfied the child's curiosity a little. Finally, the hardest week of their lives was over. The results came in. Robert brought the envelope. They sat down in the kitchen and prepared to open it. Is it ready? Robert asked Julia. Yes, she replied, her whole body trembling. Robert opened the envelope and took out a paper. According to the results of the forensic examination, Robert held it out. They are not close relatives. At that moment, each of them felt as if a stone had fallen from their souls. They turned to each other, hugged tightly, and then kissed as passionately as they had ever kissed. It seemed like never before. This week had been so painful. They missed each other so much. It was a real celebration. They wanted to scream, singing, dancing with joy. They're not relatives. They're not brother and sister. They love each other. And that's perfectly normal. Those words were like a bound to their souls. Soon the couple decided to find out why Julia was in the picture. Maybe Julia's mother was wrong. Together, they decided to go to Nancy's house and talk to her. She didn't know that they had taken a genetic test. So when she saw them together, she almost fainted. Are there really people on earth who would support such unholy liaisons? How did she raise her daughter? Julia, Robert, you. What are you two doing here together? The mother asked with innuendo. Mom, don't worry, we're not related. The happy daughter informed her from the doorstep. And they told Nancy that they had taken a test, which showed that they were not related. Maybe you were wrong. Julia asked. Maybe daddy didn't have any secret children. But I definitely remember, answered the mother with doubt in her voice. They came to the conclusion that they couldn't deal with it themselves. They would have to call in someone who could untangle this frightening tangle of secret children, double marriages, and imaginary parentage. They spent a long time looking for the right lawyer to handle these cases. And after a week of searching, they found one. I understand that you want to know who is related to whom, brother, husband, and so on. The lawyer asked, taking the couple into his office. That's exactly what Robert replied. I will do my best, but I want to warn you. Often my clients are upset when the whole truth comes out. Is that what you want? Yes, Julia replied confidently. They didn't have to wait too long for a reply from the lawyer. Three weeks later, he invited them back to his office. That's not how I figured it out. Just as I warned you, this information. You might not like it, the man said. So the first thing I found out is that you, Julia, are not the natural child of your actual mother, Nancy. Julia's eyes rounded. She didn't believe these words until she was handed a document that proved it. She was also shown a statement from her documented father stating that by fostering the child, he was committing to the secrecy of the adoption. Pardon me, but what does all this mean? Asked Julia, not understanding anything at all. And it means, dear, that we are going with you to the maternity hospital where you were born, said the lawyer. And they really went to the maternity hospital where, according to the documents, Julia was born. There they waited for a long time for an old woman, with whom the lawyer had agreed in advance to meet. She had delivered babies here for 40 years in a row. Now this woman no longer worked, of course, herself, but only sometimes supervised new young doctors. Julia Sokolova
Yes, I remember that case, the older woman said thoughtfully. What case? Julia asked in a low voice. She knew she was close to the truth. Your mother is the one that raised you, that brought you up. Lost her daughter in childbirth. The baby was stillborn. But she didn't know about it. She was too sick. She was in intensive care for two days. On the same day, a woman who was a political prisoner died in childbirth. Some high-ranking former official. She was brought to us to give birth, straight from the institution where she was serving her time. That baby wouldn't even be given to her relatives. She's as good as dead to them. That's why your birth mother's husband persuaded us to give the child to them. And he signed a statement saying he would keep the adoption secret. That child was you, sweetheart, and I'd like to say that your birth father was a genius. He was able to pull it all off. So his wife never figured it out. And I understand she's still in the dark to this day. My father died when I was five years old. Even if he wanted to tell me, he didn't have time. Julia reasoned aloud as she left the hospital. Julia felt a kind of emptiness inside. She had been deceived all her life, didn't know her birth mother of her real family. But on the other hand, she felt relieved. Finally, the whole story was coming to light. All this shocking news caused with her contradictory feelings of relief, but also anguish. After all, she had never seen and would never see her birth mother again. Her father had kept the truth from both Nancy and Julia all her life. Yes, she grew up a happy child, but only until her parents divorced. And her father's life, which ended so early and suddenly. Maybe he planned to tell all that later. Either way, he gave her a good life. Yes, he'd done a terrible thing to hope by cheating on her. But for Julia, for his adopted daughter, he did the best he could. Are you okay? Asked Robert as they drove home. Now they were already living in her apartment. So they didn't have to drive two hours to get home. Well, my mom's not my real mom, and my dad's not my real dad either. And I'll never see my real parents. But you are not my brother. Exclaimed Julia. That's good, said Robert, looking thoughtfully out the window. But how do I tell my mother? What do you mean? Dad didn't just not tell her. She wouldn't have gotten over it 25 years ago. Not now, she's got a heart condition. Imagine your favorite daughter coming to you and telling you she's not your daughter at all. It turns out she's been taking care of a stranger her whole life. Why a stranger? She's been caring for someone with different blood, but not a stranger. You're the closest thing she's got to family. It's not your blood that matters, it's the person you've become. She fed you, she raised you. You're closer to her than she is. She gave you all of herself and she still does. And I still want her to always think I'm the one she wanted and the one she gave birth to. You're suggesting I don't tell her. I just want her to be happy. I love her very much and I know she can't handle news like this. She deserves to be happy. Ring they came home and slept for a long time like falling into some kind of sleepy well. The last few weeks have been a nervous wreck. The genetic testing, the mysteries and school prep. But things have been going great from there. David got into a school that's very scary and coming from the class, enthusiastically told how interesting it is there. The next day, Nancy decided to visit them. She came with a portico and she gave the children new toys. With September 1, my favorites congratulated their grandmother Afterwards, everyone had tea in the living room with the very same cake. Well, you found out what the deal is with this picture. Finally, Nancy asked. She came for that, but she decided to disguise her visit as a holiday for a young schoolboy. Answered Julia. It's very simple and funny. That picture is not my Robert, but his cousin. They look exactly alike, and he is my father's collateral son. That's what caused all the confusion. Well, thank God. The woman crossed herself. She'd suffered so much. How many tears did she drink? Robert and Julia looked at each other. They decided to make another very important announcement. Mom, we're getting married, said Julia. Nancy looked at them with delight. She obviously loved the news. After all Julia had been through, she could finally find true happiness. You're invited to the wedding. I think you have a month to prepare and come to the ceremony in the best mood. Robert said, smiling. He held out an invitation to the woman, on which the date and time of the upcoming wedding were written. So it's going to be on the house then? Nancy wondered. 
I think it will be as good as any wedding in town. The main thing is that this is the place we can call home. It's where my happy life began, Julia said. Preparing for the wedding. Of course, the matter is not easy, but the couple coped with it wonderfully. Julia decided on a classic white dress. It was lush and airy and little. Maria said in delight that mommy looks like a princess in it. The decorators came to the house and decorated everything in beautiful colors. The place for the exchange of rings was organized right in front of the lake, which created just a fabulous atmosphere. There weren't many guests at the wedding. Some colleagues from work Robert Nancy and all those who helped with the court and further proceedings with family ties. In general at this wedding, one half of the guests consisted of lawyers and the other half of doctors. Of course, Julia's mother invited a few of her close friends as well. The celebration was small, but very romantic and beautiful. Robert stood by the lake and waited for his beloved. To think of it, he is finally getting married, marrying the one he loves with all his soul. The announcer announced the bride's entrance. Beautiful and tender music began to play a fabulously beautiful bride appeared. Her photo was solemnly carried by David. He was very proud of his position. He was filled with the realization of his own important mission. Like a true gentleman, he helped his mother to carry the veil. In front was Maria in a ceremonial pink dress and also lush, like a princess and scattered snow-white rose petals and smiled radiantly. At last, and Robert saw Julia, her beautiful angelic face, she really was like an angel now, descended to sinful earth. She seemed so fragile and airy, about to grow wings behind her back, and she would fly away into the heavens, but she didn't fly away. She was walking down the aisle to the man with whom she was ready to commit her whole life. Julia was sure of her Robert, and was 200% sure of herself. Now Robert could no longer hold back the stingy male tears. Standing next to him was the woman who had been his life's dream, they were about to be pronounced husband and wife. The guests were looking at them, but they felt completely disconnected from the world. They looked into each other's eyes and saw only infinite happiness. Good afternoon, honored guests and our newlyweds, said the registrar. Today two most beautiful people Julia and Robert are getting married. Today is the most beautiful and unforgettable event in your life, the creation of a family. It is the beginning of a good union of two loving hearts. From this day you will go through life hand in hand, together experiencing both the joy of happy days and sorrows. By creating a family, you have voluntarily assumed a great duty to each other and to the future of your children. Before starting the registration, I ask you once again to confirm whether your decision to become spouses, to create a family is sincere, mutual, and free. I ask you answer, bride. Yes, Julia said with sincerity. I ask you answer, groom. Absolutely yes, answered the happy Robert. The couple exchanged rings and their lips joined in a long kiss. Some of the guests were very sentimental, so they cried from such a romantic atmosphere. Julia and Robert signed and became legally husband and wife, and nothing could ever interfere with their happiness again.